So our agenda, uh, kind of check in with you and you know, how you or your family, how's your shelter in place going, the actions you've taken, and maybe issues that have come up. We won't spend a lot of time there, but I do want to hear from you. Uh, we're talking about making the most of this mastermind, how to be engaged in the fact that you are safe. The people who've masterminded with me before realize that it's okay to talk. It's okay to tell you how things are. We're going to have a brief review of session one. We're going to talk about your team and we're going to talk about your patients. Um, come, we have two more sessions after this, one on Saturday, another one on Monday. Uh, we're going to look at, uh, in both of those uh, sessions at uh, the opportunities that await that are there for us. Uh, and we're going to look at uh, um, what leadership skills you need to be using now, uh, some life hacks, if you will. And one thing that, that is important to realize, this is a chance for a do-over. You can almost make this as a clean slate. Uh, so if you, if you operate your practice in a way you didn't particularly like, uh, this is your chance to um, actually uh, have it be different. So, uh, Anyway, uh, let's continue. Uh, so uh, here is a link to a YouTube video. It's about 52 minutes long, uh, made from a pulmonologist from New York, David Price. He describes four simple protection measures to prevent COVID-19. And Nelson Marquina shared that with me, so I thought I'd share it with you. Here's a link that I got just this morning from uh, an email from Decisions in Dentistry a bunch of different resources there, which I think will be helpful. Uh, so I hope that you will uh, utilize that. Um, anyway, Lynn, did you have your hand in the air? Did I? Uh... I did not. Okay, fair enough, good. We just enough. moved around. It's very, very sensitive to speak. Yeah, it, yeah <laughs> yes, we're, we're sensitive. So checking in, how are you doing? How's your family doing? How have you adapted? So give me a little feedback here. How's it going, guys or gals? This is Len again. Yeah. Uh, we're here from our war room at the victory table. <laughs> uh, been, we set aside a part of the house to uh, plan for our emergence from this crisis. And our, our prayer and our thought is always that we're going to come out better and stronger. Uh, than we were so yeah we we kind of been bolstering nancy and i are, are here at home yeah doing well we're locked in here we're waiting for the all clear signal yeah children in chicago and new york that we worry about but yeah there's not anything we can do about it right now except if i go in there and <clears throat> i got a james bond movie with a helicopter and things firing <laughs> and 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 take them out of there. I mean, it's just not going to happen. Uh, yeah, we're we're working every day on <clears throat> top top list. We go over the, the things that we need to do every day, and we we do those in succession. Most important first, and if the last one doesn't get done, uh, we'll just have to go to the next day. Uh, this is good. I. I Mentally and physically, we're doing well. We're using this time to, to, to get better physically and eating well and doing our supplements and doing all the things our, our doctors have recommended to keep our immunities up. Yeah, what, what we don't know is, we, you know, what we, can't, what we don't know and what we can't control, we can't do anything about, but you are doing something about what you can do. Um, Correct. And... Uh, you know, a lot of times it's just doing the basics to survive that, re that are required. You know, one of the things that, that uh, is true is, is how uh, financially fit you were before this crisis will determine a little bit how you come through it. However, this is, all, this is, this is literally a time to wipe the slate clean, which I'm going to talk about in another session and kind of re refactor how you want your practice to be. So 
Does anybody need any specific help? By the way, you're welcome to uh, put that into, um, into the chat box uh, and whether you, uh, and I will look at that. Uh, you can take this phone number down. It's my personal mobile phone. 804-241-0876. Uh, you get in a bind and need an emergency call, I'll try to help you out, okay? Uh, or have a specific topic that uh, is important to you right now. So, uh, any other comments, thoughts, opinions, ideas, or uh, things you'd like to share? I would, Charlie. Okay. So, like Len said, we're actually using the opportunity to bolster our health regimen. Uh huh. So I hope to come out of this in better shape than I went into it. And I saw a great webinar last night on functional medicine with Mark Hyman, uh -huh. um, who was talking about all those things, talking about stress and mindset, um, food, mm. exercise, and all those things that, like you pointed out, you can control. So there are things that you can focus on now. No one knows what's around the corner business-wise. You, you can plan all you want, but like the saying says, man plans and God laughs. <laughs> Well, I think uh, we all need to uh, think about how we're going to come out of this and what we're going to do. So um, uh, there's a little chat here, Frank Cordray. Hi, Frank. Uh, and the answer is yes, health insurance premiums are included in the costs covered uh, in the PPP loans, um, just so you know that. Um, but you and you should also include those health insurance costs when you estimate your two and a half times your average payroll from 2019. So I'm not an accountant nor an attorney. So take my take my advice uh, as someone who knows a little bit, but certainly check with your accountant on that more specifically. But thank you for asking. Uh, and that's how I got that through the chat. So thank you. Um, uh, all right, so let's continue um, and uh, how to make this mastermind, uh, virtual mastermind more successful. First of all, engage with it, ask questions, put things in the chat. You know, if you don't want to show yourself or be heard, that's fine. Uh, but one of the things I want you to do is ask yourself these questions. How can I apply what I'm learning here? What more do I need? Because we want to be flexible enough that you get what you need. And also it's, you know, chime in, uh, uh, Steve and Lynn and, and, uh, Michael have probably been around me, although there's a few people who've been around me a long time, uh, on here, uh, who know that, uh, that's one of the best ways to get the most out of the mastermind and also create a plan of action after each session. Um, you know, make some decisions, uh, so that you can move forward. You know, the worst thing you can possibly do right now is freeze up. And so please, <laughs> you do not want to do that. Uh, so uh, just make sure that you uh, are moving forward, that you are getting things done. And you know, it is time to catch up, things that have been sitting there that you haven't gotten done. And let me give you a little secret. A little secret. So when you're feeling stuck and you're like, oh, I just can't even think. Take one thing and complete it. For, for a gal, it might be clean out her purse. For a guy, it might be clean out his wallet. And I'm saying this quite seriously. It sounds silly, but it's really not. It's not because, you know, what your mind doesn't like is incompletions. The more things you complete, the more able you become. So in this time of catch up, think of all the things that are incomplete that you've always been meaning to get to. 
uh, the chances are quite strong that we still have a couple of months to go through this thing. We're in early April now, uh, but the chances are strong that it's going to be June, even mid-June, before there's a, a you know some version of all clear. Uh, although I'm not sure um, if that's going to be even that's going to be true. Uh, so, but we have to plan for the worst here because there's really no other choice in the process of this. So. Okay, so create a plan and a list of aha. So also at the end, I'm gonna ask you for what learnings you gained uh, and for uh, what steps you're planning to take. And, and I suggest you just make a list as we go because I just think that's the best way to operate with this uh, so you understand what's happening, all right? So a little update on financial issues. Um, it's becoming more clear. There's, you know, there's everywhere you turn, you probably got an announcement on your email about this webinar or that webinar. These slides came from a, uh, uh, an accounting firm that here in Richmond. Uh, and the, the a reason to put this up is, um, about what, uh, information you need regarding, uh, you know, documents for, uh, applying for the Paycheck Protection Program. Um, so <clears throat> if for some reason there's someone who's on plan to practice a short period of time, <clears throat> they can take that period of time, say early January through February 15th, or actually a little bit further than that, uh, and, and, you know, uh, project it out for the year. So uh, that's the uh, one point. Uh, what happens after you receive the funds? You've got eight weeks to spend it. What happens if you don't use all the funds? Well, if it's going to go into another loan, it will still be at a fairly low interest rate. Uh, and it will be quite liberal terms. I've heard rates as far as one half of 1% to three and a half percent. So this payroll protection program, everyone who's in a practice should be getting that. One thing about uh, and then, and one of the, you know, this came up last time as well, it should, which is, well, do I let people go? Do I furlough them? I lay them off. Of course, layoff really is firing them. Furlough means you're taking time off, forced time off and you can come back. <clears throat> the thing is, if you, if you, let's say you do a pay, you know, you reduce their pay. Well, first of all, if you reduce it by 25% or more, you're not eligible for this paycheck protection program. So just know that. Uh, it does allow you to pay people, but what happens if it goes more than eight weeks? If it goes 10 weeks, which is what I'm thinking it's going to, although I cannot project out on that one either because we aren't, we haven't flattened this curve yet. Uh, if we go 10 weeks, well, you could probably handle that. But if it goes more than that, you know, you, you realize what you're going to have to do. So be smart about this. Also, the smaller the team you have, so Steve, you mentioned two or three different people, and I can't remember if it was two or three, but you know, it, it might be that you work with them individually and uh, use that loan program. Every state has a different rule about whether you can do that or not. One point I did, I wanna make, if they did work, if you recall, what I talked about here, just to remind everyone, is make an agreement with your team that you will uh, loan them the money so they have some money if they're not completing some type of project for you, but you'll loan them the money. And then when we get back and they're gonna work extra hours, you do have to, quote, pay them time and a half on that money when they're working extra hours, just let you remind you about overtime. Uh, so just keep that in mind. All right. So Charlie, did you say everybody should get the PPP? I said everybody should get the PPP. No matter what our situation is. Pretty much. Well, exp let me explain why. What's the worst that can happen as far as taking that loan? you don't spend it all and you've got to convert it into uh, a regular SBA 7A loan. Okay. Um, so I, I think it just right now cash is king. 
and it's not going to stay that way for you know for I mean, it, I mean it's 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 going to be that way for a while and right now it's time for extreme frugality extreme frugality you notice there's no fee for this well um i i, I couldn't in good conscience say yeah pay me a bunch of money for this it's going to be valuable it is valuable but still this is this is time for extreme frugality and look at things i mean i, I see i know there's some orthodontist on here um uh, you know although you don't i mean you operate differently than a general practice but still uh, you have to be aware a patient's going to be wanting to come in. You're going to be social distancing. I think there's going to be a lot of things that are going to happen and we can't count on things reverting back to normal. In fact, I don't think they will. So uh, the uh, economic injury disaster loan, it's a different loan. Uh, you can have this loan and the PPP loan. Uh, so uh, again, consult with your uh, accountant on that. Uh, all right, Michael, did you have something? Yeah, so uh, I just got something this morning that said that you should be applying to this. First of all, right. it doesn't open up until tomorrow. Uh huh. Um, you should be applying for it through your bank. Yes. And it's eight weeks. Right. So you need to do a bit of a projection. Yes. Because you might not want to necessarily take it now. You might want to take it several weeks from now. Good point. And, but let me, and then let me add this. Let me uh, hitchhike on that, uh, that concept, which is that we don't know how long it's going to take to get the money. Exactly. So once you take the money, then the clock starts. So, um, Someone, my, Steve asked what's just. My understanding is that the banks will give you the money relatively quickly. They're encouraged to do that. That's why you need to go to sort of some, a bank that you know. Well, that's the other thing. So in order to get this loan, the bank has to have done business with you. Otherwise, they have to go through a qualification process that takes more time. So if you go to a bank that is um, licensed to give out SBA loans and you have a previous relationship with you, with them, it will speed up the process. Yeah. By the way, your most banks are going to be, especially the larger banks are going to be qualified as SBA banks. So you should, uh, you know, you have to be an SBA bank. Um, so just remember that. Um, I, Charlie, my bank uh, that I have a great relationship with is not an SBA and they've applied to be one. So it's probably going to be three weeks before they even can take the application. Okay. Uh, but they know me for right. 40 years. So yep. I'm thinking that maybe I should wait, like Mike was saying, and work with a bank that you know knows me inside and out. I know. Remember, this program only goes to June 30th. as it now stands that's fluid it could change but right now it goes to june 30th so okay. just keep that in mind yeah. uh also a caveat if banks have the ability to appropriate your money in your that you have in their bank if things get really super bad and give you stock in the bank in lieu of the money that you had there now that's a crazy rule, but it exists on the books. So I suggest that if you have a loan with, or loans with a particular bank, that you keep your operating cash and checking account in a different bank, because then they couldn't appropriate it. Does that make sense? Look, I don't think the whole, I think the whole rule doesn't make sense. And I think it's very extreme, but uh, in a crisis, you never know what's going to happen. It pays to be prudent. You know, your bank, if you've got a loan and you're keeping your checking, et cetera, all there, uh, they might not like it if you move, but you don't want your cash taken. So just be aware of that. 
Okay, last one, which, last one you said, take the uh, equity money, put it in the account. Yep. So I assume that should be a checking, not a savings account. However you want to do it. it really, you know, the, the saving isn't going to be very much, so it's not much so difference. That, that you're saying I should put that in another bank? Mm-hmm. Okay, all right. And the other bank can't take it? That's right. Okay, what if I have no loans? Congratulations. No, I mean, does that, could they take the money only if I owe them money? Yeah. Okay, so if I don't owe them any money, they can't take any. There you go. Yep. Okay, all right. Yep, yep. All right, very good. Uh, if this is uh, making sense to you and being helpful to you, uh, just, uh, 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 you know, give me, a, give me a, put in the chat box, yes or yay or a thumbs up or something there. So I know that you're, you're there. Um, all right. Okay. So let's continue. Um, Uh, liquidity management. So we already know there's significant disruption to business operations. Uh, I've sent in a number of webinars for quote regular business uh, through this process and uh, many of them uh, are not doing um, uh, at, you know as what I mean some of them a few of them are experiencing uh, severe liquidity problems, but none of them are shut down like dentistry is. I mean, we're completely shut down. Even the restaurants um, are, uh, you know, can do takeout. Uh, it's hard to do takeout dentistry. So anyway, uh, keep liquid. Uh, and it, the, the big notes from this accounting firm was maintain the business afloat by keeping conserving cash. Because you don't want to avoid selling uh, Ill illiquid assets. Uh, also, another point, you know, I gave you last time like eight sources of cash. Uh, the home equity line was the top of that heap. It was not the top of the heap, but is if you're borrowing money. Um, uh, I suggest that you, you know, only do that as you need to. Do not, you know, do not take money. I did suggest, you know, you have the ability to get cash, but don't take money unless you, I mean, if you've got a pile of cash already somewhere, great. Um, very few dentists uh, do any type of three-work cash forecasting, yet regular business does, and they do it all the time. And they, uh, that's just something uh, that uh, you would be, put your practice in a much higher state. Uh, this 13 week projected cash forecast is something that CFOs and companies do. We don't have CFOs. Uh, but if you're, uh, one of the things I want to awaken you to is that if your accountant has been mostly an historian for you and not been a money advisor about managing cash, about handling your expenses, about keeping your overhead in control, uh, you may want to look for someone who is active. You know, unfortunately, many accountants are historians, meaning they'll produce the financial records for you required for tax purposes, right? You're in the highest tax season, uh, but they may not be working with you to help you financially manage your practice. One of the things that, you know, regular businesses do is they look at what the current assets are, current, current liabilities. Well, you know, what's current assets? That's cash that you have on hand or things you convert to cash quickly. A stock is, would be one. You probably don't have stocks in your dental practice. Although what are your current liabilities? That's going to be what are payments are due and credit cards and that sort of thing. And so the better this ratio is, the happier they are. The days outstanding you have an accounts receivable and the days payable you have. So um, this is something that, you know, I, I suggested to you last time that you, you know, use the bush hog. I mean, you've got to cut every expense on the sun, moon, and stars. Um, so um, if you are in good contact with your uh, accountant, 
just put uh, give me a thumbs up or a, some kind of signal right that like that to keep me posted so I know that you that you're doing that. So please, uh, yeah, Michael, what you got? No, oh, I'm. I, I've I've been in contact almost every day. Good. As because everything's. I mean, the three hundred and fifty a billion dollar uh, program that was originally passed mm -hmm. has now changed. So everything, like you said, yeah, the situation is fluid. Absolutely. So your accountant should be the one keeping up on that. We can't. That's well, it's not our language. We can certainly read it, but it gets confusing. It's not, you're not used to it. So my eyes glaze over. What's that? My eyes glaze over. I know. Yeah. You know, we, we, you know we're dentists, we're scientists and artists, you know, but, and, and we have to put another hat on called businessman. So a good businessman works with their accountant pretty intently to make sure that they have a viable business of or all women. times, of all times. <clears throat> if it's never been true for you before, now it should be obvious to you. <coughs> Jets put energy <coughs> into running your practice. I promise I'm not COVID positive. So let's continue. <sighs> So uh, accounts receivable, uh, I hope you have someone who is still managing accounts receivable and that you've gone proactive uh, in dealing with accounts payable. <clears throat> and you've, you've gone to all the bigs that we talked about last time, your lenders, your credit card companies, your landlord, mortgage company, et cetera, and asking for a delay. Remember the suggestion to you was to uh, ask for a 90 day uh, delay uh, or abatement even uh, of interest and principal. And if they can't do it that way, that they add it to the end, whether it's a lease or a loan. Um, if you already have money that you've borrowed, you have loans, it may be a time to look at refinancing. Maybe not. Uh, it depends on what your interest rate is. Uh, so just keep these things in mind uh, as you go along. Key takeaways, you need to be, have it really, uh, strong financial controls and increase your communication. This is a factor that I, I want you to really get. Uh, the, the communication with people decreases uncertainty. What happens when people don't hear from you? It creates a vacuum. And what does a vacuum pull in? It pulls in all kinds of other thoughts, many of which may not be good. So just understand that you have to certainly communicate with your team and with your patients as well as those, your suppliers and vendors and banks. So uh, right now, you know, if you can build a pile of cash, do it uh, and then protect it like crazy. <clears throat> uh, so, all right. A suggestion for you and your patients. I suggest that you communicate with them at least twice a week in as a group. <clears throat> and this can be by email, by the way. You should all have the ability to email your patients out of your practice management system. Uh, if you, uh, if you uh, do have that ability, uh, kind of raise your hand in the, in, the, uh, in the chat so I know that you, that you know that you do. Uh, good. No, raising the hand. Yeah, good. I like to hear that. Good. Good. All right. So a twice a week email. What do you want to do with this twice a week email? You want to be friendly. You want to provide information. You might provide a, a, uh, a list of things to do for the kids that are stuck at home or for the grandkids that are stuck at home. Like I have grandkids in my house right now. Uh, there was a list that I gave to you last time that about a list of 150 things from a Google doc, uh, about what you could do. So you want to provide helpful information, reassure them, tell them steps that you're taking and just keeping them abreast of what's happening. The other thing I'm going to suggest we'll talk about a little later is personal contact with your, at least the patients that you would consider your best patients. Um, it's also helpful to use the social channels 
you know, use a Facebook post or, or a Instagram post. Uh, if you're on Twitter, which most dentists aren't, uh, but your patients are, uh, might be a place to put up information as well. Um, if you can do video chat, do video chat, you can do FaceTime, you can do a Zoom. By the way, Zoom uh, has, a, has the ability to give you a free account. And so it used to be a limitation of 40 minutes. Right now they've removed that. So you could also do a Zoom call, a FaceTime call, but you want to update the patient on what you're doing to protect patient safety. One of the things that uh, if you know about, I'm interested in hearing about, <clears throat> any systems for um, fogging your, your office uh, or you know, disinfection on a big scale. Does anybody have information about that? that because it very well may be required in our practices. Anybody have any, any personal information about that right now? Okay. I'm looking. <clears throat> so provide helpful suggestions and answer questions. Um, by the way, uh, in the personal contact, you may get questions. And well, at that one, uh, what's that? in my area have uh, cleaning companies that come in and there's some kind of spray. They spray over the entire gym and it says it kills now kills everything and uh, doesn't leave a film and uh, I can get the name of the company probably. Okay. Well, I'm thinking someone's going to come up with uh, some device that we can put in our, in our medical offices, healthcare offices that will do this. Just understand <clears throat> your overhead's going up. Your expenses for infection control just went up. Uh, and I, you know, patients are, are going to be very leery of coming to a place that's not having fairly stringent uh, uh, infection controls. So just be aware that that's true. Okay. So <clears throat> how many of you already have started, already started communicating with your patients either by email or calls already? If you have, go ahead and, uh, oh, there you go. Good. Good. Well, let's keep this up. Now, let me, let me give you a, a little um, heads up here too. <clears throat> Most dentists won't do this, but the fact that you do does a couple of things. One, it improves the relationship you have with that patient. That's a big plus. Number two, you become more top of mind. You, they remember you. <clears throat> One of the things I suggest all of you to do is to contact at least the good patients you have, maybe not the best, well, the best and good patients you have, twice a year. When you personally, because when you do this, it changes how they refer. They remember it. And when because they remember it, they're more likely to have your name top of mind. When a situation comes to refer, they refer you. So just keep this in mind. So there's, a, there's an advantage of doing this. You're gonna submit the relationship, you're gonna find out things you need to find out. And by the way, are the, when, they, when, when they, patients know you, like you and trust you, are they more likely to accept whatever you suggest? We all know the answer is yes. So just keep in mind, this is, a, you're investing in a relationship bank and you're depositing feelings of, you know, feelings that they like you, and they trust you. So, uh, by the way, it's uh, in this, the broad public things, it's certainly okay to talk about how you're handling it, uh, tips and tricks and hacks and whatever else you want to say, tell about, tell about your own family. So there's no lack of things you can say. Okay. So with your patients, this is going to deepen relationships and you need to find out what they're thinking. You know, let me take that a further because we don't, obviously want to allay their fears and concerns, but also we want to make sure that we find out what they're thinking about. So can we market for anything to our patients right now? No, we can't. We're not even open. We're not there. Once we start to get the idea that we're going to be able to start again, then we should turn on our marketing in a big way, but what marketing should we turn on? 
We need to find out what they're thinking about and market to those concerns. We already know it's going to be about infection control. What are you going to do to keep me safe? We already have a problem with the likely decrease in demand for dentistry. So you need to be find out what they are thinking, what your patients are thinking, which these personal calls will help reveal to you, okay, uh, so that you can market to that when it's time. Okay, by the way, uh, a little something I suggest for you right now. Keep a journal. Keep a journal of things that you uh, learned in this process. For example, Lynn talked about having a war room. That put a smile on my face, Lynn, I gotta tell you. Uh, and hey, a victory table, <laughs> it was like awesome. Uh, but there's a good reason to do such a thing. Keep a journal of the things that you learn so that you can, you know, okay, I learned that. Hmm. So you can apply them in the future. And keeping the journal also helps in another way. You know, one of the one of the things that that I know that a number of people do is they have a first thing in the morning, what they call Renaissance time. You know, where Renaissance means rebirth. So what do they do? They're they're uh, they are in meditation, they're praying, they're reading a religious text of some, whatever it may be for you. Uh, they're doing something to, they're journaling. They're doing something for self so that they can be there at their best. You know, being at your best is one of, one of the, so you can be your best with your patients and your family is one of the, one of the things that you should always be doing. Sometimes we forget that. Um, <clears throat> we're going to talk about that on another session. So, um, you understand that this is uh, this investment in communicating is very valuable. So let me give you a suggestion on what to say amongst the things that you say and think, ah, <laughs> okay. Which is a triple a, ah, <clears throat> and show some appreciation. Thank you for being your patient. Be very specific. If you can show admiration, Find something because find something about it because everybody has something. I don't care if they're, you know, what station in life they have, they have something. I have a mailman where the, the new area we live and this mailman is very friendly. Nobody has mailboxes on the street. So they, it, it's all a slot in the door. So he has to come up, up the driveway and, you know, come up the steps and put the stuff in the door through the slot. And he, when we first arrived, Randy made a point to introduce himself. I'm Randy. Dot, dot, dot. I, uh, I, you know, I'm the mailman for Windsor Farms and I just want to say hi. Well, I don't think I've, I've never had a mailman at a residential place ever do that before. And so I'm going to bet you with confidence that every Christmas, Randy gets goodies or tips or something because Randy makes a point to take care of the people on his postal delivery route. So he was, you know, kind of showing appreciation, being different. So in this case, obviously your patients, uh, some you've had for, as, for a very long time, but you want to make sure you appreciate them, show some admiration for something as we talked about. And it really, you want it to, you know, it's really an affinity. It's an affection. You create the I like you effect. And then ask, how can I help you? Anything that you need. And I'm going to talk about now about what I call, I, I didn't develop the, the name, by the way, or five-minute favors. Five-minute favors are things that you can do, things you can give a resource, you can uh, do a, a small favor for someone that helps them. People remember the favors. So figure out what five minute favor you can give them that they will have appreciation for uh, because they will remember it uh, and they'll like that. Uh, so let's talk about your team. And we talked about the team a lot last time, particularly about whether we're keeping them or furloughing them or what we're doing uh, or laying them off. But I suggest that you communicate with those that are part of your team. And if they're, 
if they're furloughed, certainly include them still uh, about uh, what's going on. Um, and, and, you know, they're going to do a little agenda here about your team. So uh, let me continue here. So update them on what we know about the virus, what we're going to do on infection control, update on the practice, have a little free flow of information going back and forth. This could be a group phone call. Uh, there's a some resource called freeconferencecall.com. You can use do a conference call uh, or you can do a Zoom call. But, <clears throat> you know, you want to make sure the mail's taken care of. If no one's at your office to take the mail, make sure you put in something at the post office so that you can get your mail at home. I had to handle phone calls from patients. Uh, right now, it wouldn't be bad to take the daggone phone calls. Uh, if you can log into your computer and operate it, your practice management system, awesome. Uh, make sure that your insurance files are still going out, you're still billing, you still get your computer reports. How far out to schedule? Um, this is a little tricky, but you can certainly work on scheduling out 90 days. The longer you take to begin scheduling, the more difficult it is going to be to build the schedule that you want. Does that make sense? You know that's true. Now, we don't know what's going to happen, but 90 days is a fair assessment. You can always, you can always change it. Uh, but that would be a, a place to uh, start scheduling out. Uh, certainly you want to make sure that you're answering patient questions and that you as a group have the answer to these questions that patients might ask. It's also a time you can do training. If you want to train them on doing something specifically and then planning the return. How many of you have started some version of this so far? If you have kind of raise your hand, let me see that you have done something. Good. See if you have. Excellent. All right. Very good. Thank you, Derek. Olivia. Good. Nelson. So this is something that you <clears throat> want to continue to do. Uh, and if you have some <clears throat> one person <clears throat> uh, handling, being an office manager or something like that, handling the majority of these items right now, all good. Uh, how many of you have at least one team member that you've retained? At least one. Kind of go ahead and raise your hand. Let me know. Okay. Good. Good. All right. Um, excellent. So uh, let's continue. <clears throat> so prepare for fewer. Hmm. The dental economy is likely to trail the regular economy and coming back. Uh, uh, Maria Bartolomo on Fox News predicted that fourth quarter of the year was going to be a rocket ride. It's going to come streaming back. Well, that's the fourth quarter of the year. We're now in the second quarter of the year. Uh, that's a while away. Do you have to plan still for a... Uh, depressed productive time because I do not think that people are going to come roaring back saying, yes, yes, see me, see me, see me. Uh, the better, the one exception to that is that if we get, create a marketing appeal to the minds of potential patients at the time of our return, then that is more likely to work. What you probably will get though <clears throat> is a flow of emergency patients who say, Hey, uh, I really want to be seen and, you know, right now they, they may just, they just may not want that. Of course not. But, uh, one of the things is that when you add back team members, I suggest that you keep this number in mind and that is productivity per full-time equivalent staff member. Dentistry has had a real problem. It's not just dentistry. In fact, it's most small businesses. In studying general business, which I've done, uh, the full-time equivalent productivity uh, is very different. The successful, larger, even small business, but medium-sized companies, large companies, have much different numbers. For example, <clears throat> Apple two years ago 
uh, had a had a profitability, not a production, but profitability of almost thirty-seven thousand dollars per month per employee. That was profitably completely different number. <clears throat> But since labor costs are your largest expense on your PL, you have to consider what is a viable number. A viable number is at least 20K, if not 25K. So let's do some easy math. So if you're producing $100,000 a month, that means you've got four or five people. But let's say you have only four. Okay. Let's say you have five. Good. So in that case, it's 20,000. Okay. You still want to make it better, but those people should be delivering awesome customer service to your patients. And by the way, here's a golden rule. If you ask your team, do they need more people? They most always say yes. Ask me why I know because I got in trouble with that 20 years ago and I paid a lot of money getting out of it. I'd let people go as I realized, hey, this isn't working at all. So <clears throat> also prepare for fewer patients and lesser demand because, uh, uh, I'm sorry, okay, I'll bring, uh, that's on, on, on patients, but we are going to have an un unemployment in dentistry that's going to be re relatively high. So you're not going to have a lack of candidates like we've had in the past. A number of you have told me that you got ghosted. People would say they were going to, you know, come in uh, for an interview and they never show up at all. Uh, when in, in, you know, before there were more jobs chasing fewer people, there were more jobs than there were people to fill them. So understand there's more, you're more likely to be able to pick up uh, good uh, team members. So just keep that in mind. Uh, but, and let's talk about team members. I want you to remove the C players. Anybody that's mediocre, just cut them and be done with it. Um, you know, uh, you have to evaluate team members as individuals and uh, as team members and individuals. Is their individual performance good? Average or, you know, where is it? And then how do they perform as a team member? It's two things. Any great sports team, you know this to be true, if they're an outstanding individual player, but they're not a team player, the best teams will get rid of them. So take the team member. You can make this question. Here's the key question you could say. Knowing what I know now, what you know now, would you enthusiastically hire that person again? The key here is enthusiastically hire that, enthusiastically hire. If you wouldn't, okay, that really answers the question. Another one is you have someone who's always a pain in the ass, that they're always asking for extras, this or that. Well, you know that they aren't living the values of your practice if they're being that way. So eliminate low performers, either as individuals or team members. And in this case, you could even re consider removing Bs as well. And so when I'm talking about A, B, and C, I'm talking about what's an A? An A player performs well as an individual, performs well as a team member, takes initiative, and, and gives voice and helps lead the group. Okay. That's, and you have, what many people have those people and you, everybody would, would really do well to have at least one A in the front and one A in the back. But now is the time to get rid of your C's. How many of you have already decided to get rid of a C? Raise your hand. Let me know that you already have. Good. Good. Well, it's the, the reality is thank you, Joyce, Steve, Derek. Uh, the reality is virtually <clears throat> every practice has at least one person who's mediocre. You had you hired them in desperation because you had to have someone. Well, this is the time to get rid of that someone you had to have that you really don't. <clears throat> Recruit A players. There's going to be a new pool of candidates. And gratefully, I think there's going to be a suppression on wages because there's going to be more demand. Now, think about this for a minute. <clears throat> If there is about 100, 120,000, we're gonna call it 100 for easy math, but 120,000 private practices, maybe a little bit less than that now, practices in the country, okay? And if each of those practices let 
two or three people go, uh, you're going to have a, a pretty big pool of possibility. I mean, I thought about this. I was walking with my wife and I went, Oh my gosh, if, if we could have, you know, a million dental staff members unemployed right now, it's basically what you do. That's what we got. So we're going to have a new pool of candidates. <clears throat> and how do you evaluate for a players? They love to make other people happy. Their focus is on making you happy, making the team happy, making patients happy. By the way, remember, the best indicator of future performance is past performance. So if they've done it well in the past as a performer, it doesn't even have to be in the field, your field. You know, I can never forget the story. Got a young man who applied for a job. He said, I don't have any experience. Well, tell me about what you've done in the past. And the interviewer is smart enough to dig enough. He goes, well, I helped build a house. You built a house? See, that's the, that is past performance. How did you do in school? You know, look at communication ability and <clears throat> uh, check references. The key question in referencing is you can't ask them this question. They can't tell you by law. They can't tell you a, a lot of stuff because they can get sued. Now, some will if you, if you talk to prior uh, employers. But the key question is, would you hire again if given the opportunity? They can give you that answer. If they say no, it's probably no for you as well. So just keep that in mind. Um, beware though, it's estimated in general that resumes 60% have mistakes, omissions, or outright lies. If there's unexplained gaps in the work history, that's a red flag as well. And seriously, is there a gap because they were in prison? That's happened. Also beware of the halo effect. You, look, you see someone, you like the way they look, they talk nice. And so now you project how you want them to be into the interview. Also remember there's an interview personality. And those interview personalities, they've been trained to say the right things in interviews. You can go online and be trained on how to do an interview. Also, there can be hidden criminal or even drug histories. So doing background checks is worth the price. So don't uh, not do that. Uh, I remember uh, finding out that the person had a, a, both a drug history and a criminal background. And no, I did not hire them. Uh, so just be aware that that is something you have to do these days. So for your people system, I suggest you form, this is a great time to formalize it magnetize your practice to attract A players. Now look, A players know they're A players. They know. And what attracts them? A great culture attracts them. So who you are, what you do, and why you do it. That needs to be documented, clarified, and stated. It's what I call the heart, soul, and goal of your practice. The heart being your purpose, the goals are the goals, the values and beliefs are the soul of the practice. What, what are our operating life principles we work on? Create a culture guide as a magnet because it will create that magnet. And what people want is a future. I remember call, talking recently to actually a past client of helping, trying to help him out. And, you know, he told them that he was interested, he was going to work on selling the practice. Well, I don't suggest you do that because they didn't see a bright future and then he had a mass exodus all at once. Uh, one other thing, and so don't, if you, you know, if you are planning on transitioning, don't tell your team that you're going to do it until really kind of the last minute, um, because it doesn't serve you to do it. Uh, but do use your team, particularly your A players, uh, to recruit other A players, but you need to teach them how to do it. Talk to their friends, people they know, uh, and certainly, uh, bonus them. I suggest bonusing them. Uh, if they do recruit someone good for you. So just keep that in mind as well. Uh, so <clears throat> raise your hand uh, so I can see it if you've got any questions uh, uh, or thoughts. We're on our hour as it is right now, so I don't want to go beyond. That's kind of the promise I've made to you. that We can at least keep it going for an hour. And I hope it's been beneficial. Any particular wins or ahas that you've had?
Steve? I was uh, surprised how easy and fast it did, was to uh, get my Audi car loan delayed for three months without any uh, penalty. It, it literally took two or three minutes and they were more than happy and they expected it. Yeah. And, uh, very, very, very easy. Um, Good. Anyone else have uh, uh, any experience in dealing with one of those bigs like that sort of thing? All right, fair enough. So uh, take a moment and put in the chat one, at least one, if not two or three, but at least one, one thing that you've learned in this process and going through this uh, session today or even last session that's been helpful for you. Well, Charlie, something, uh, uh, an insight has validated actually is the idea that uh, post this big issue that we are now is to plan on attracting the A players uh, as we shrink down, um, down to, I, I kept one A, a, a person in mm -hmm. the staff uh, and that person goes to the office uh, three days a week, right. checking mail and uh, doing the, the housekeeping type of things. Right. Uh, but that, 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 that person is golden. And uh, yes, I'm relying on her to bring new, new A players right. after we go finish all this process. But you're right, it's a matter of changing the, the talking points, uh, the, the culture. Yeah. Uh, how do we communicate the culture so we can bring those A players uh, in, in 60 days, 90 days or something like that. Uh, thank you. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, you know, your the, the, it used to be when I would talk to clients and prospective ones, their big issue was getting new patients and getting those new patients to say yes and making a profit. More recently it was, I got people problems. I can't get people hired or I lose them. Uh, that has changed dramatically. You know, we've, we've had a, a enormous disruption by this virus and, and now it's changed the game. Uh, and it can be great for you or, or at least better for you than it was. Uh, but you've got to put your, put your mind on making sure it does that. So congratulations, uh, Nelson on with the steps that you've taken. Uh, Steve says, don't procrastinate. Don't second guess, go ahead and get this going. Uh, you know, in uncertain times, Frank says that information is king and it is. Um, <laughs> so this is the time not to freeze. It's time to move. So well done on that. Uh, Michael talks about ozone. Uh, Mike, Michael, what do you want to talk about? Tell, tell us what you're thinking about ozone. So you were talking about sort of defogging the, um, yes. the operatories. Um, and uh, this was mentioned by um, Mark Hyman last night as well. Ozone has been shown to kill viruses. Um, and I don't know much about it, other than I do know that there are docs that are using it and yes. there are air purifiers that produce ozone in the air. Right. Yes, there so is. It was, yeah. it was re in regards to that. Yeah. So if you have a chance between now and Saturday or Monday, anyone uh, do and do a little research on this particular topic and bring it to us. I'd be appreciative. Something uh, as Something else you can also consider or look into options is using UV lamps, ultraviolet lamps. Yes. Uh, some, some, in some places called woods lamps. And they sure, certainly kill most viruses and some bacteria. Okay. And can those be, uh, do those have to be target specific, Nelson, or they need, can they be kind of ubiquitous through an office? Ubiquitous, yeah. It could be it depends on this the size of the uh, beam, the spot size. Mm -hmm. If you have a, some of them are handheld, like a yeah. flashlight, then that would yeah. be spot. Sure. Uh, but some of the lamps are large, larger beam spot size, and that's ubiquitous. You can just treat a whole a whole dental chair. There you go. Yeah, we're, and, and, um, and we're going to do clean countertops as well. So that's why I was asking that question. Uh, I don't, I don't, I don't have the answer right now, but anyway, uh, that's all. It's, uh, it is time to act. It is time to, uh, uh, 
do things. Okay. Uh, if you, uh, I appreciate the people that put something in the chat. Uh, at least I know you're there. Uh, so thank you for uh, being here. Uh, and I hope you've gotten uh, good value from this. Uh, and I will, we're going to resume on Saturday morning. Uh, and we're going to be like the Downton Abbey people. What's a weekend? Uh, it kind of all melts when we were, have, we're forced to stay at home. Uh, do things for yourself, read the book you've always wanted to be read, catch up, clean up, and do what you can do. Uh, I'm Charlie Martin, masteryourpractice.com. Thanks for being here.